A while back, I did a couple episodes on Formtastic, which offers a convenient way to generate forms in Rails. But in this episode, I'm going to take a look at an alternative gem called Simple Form. So just like Formtastic, Simple Form here is a way to generate form views. And even these method calls inside the view are extremely similar and heavily influenced by Formtastic. So if you're familiar with Formtastic, you should feel right at home here. So now the million dollar question is, what's the difference between these two gems? Why would you choose one over the other? Well, simple form I feel is a little lighter weight. It doesn't include an entire style sheets file that it expects you to use. Um, it's just a way to generate markup in the HTML. Uh, it's also more customizable and extendable I feel. So if you felt that uh, Formtastic was sort of stepping on your toes and making you do markup that uh, wasn't really your preference, you definitely want, should check this out. So let's work on integrating simple form into the application you see here, which just has some product models. And if we click new product, we have a form for creating a new product. And it has a lot of different type of form fields, so this will be a good exercise in upgrading using simple form. The first step is to go to your gem file in your application and add simple form there. And then run bundle install to make sure you've got that gem. That looks good. So next we run a generator called simple form install, and that just adds a few files. Now we'll take a look at these generated files a little later on. They're mainly used for customization. But for now, let's work on updating our form view code. So this is the form view, which you saw for our product model a little earlier on. The first thing you need to do is change this form4 call to simple form4. And then for each of these fields here, much like formtastic, you now have this f.input method, which you can use instead of having to do the label and text fields separately and so on. So we want to do one for name, one for price, one for released on, one for the category. And category is a little bit interesting because this is actually an association. Notice I'm using collection select here because product belongs to a category. So in this case, you change input to association and then that will add a category uh, collection select menu automatically behind the scenes. And then we have uh, a rating and discontinued. And we finally have a submit button. So we just say button submit. And that's it. So that's our form code all in simple form. So now we can try this out by reloading our form here in the browser. Hit reload and it looks quite a bit different. Not quite right because we aren't using um, styling for this type of form, but it's easy enough to add some style sheets for this. And so going to my style sheets file, I'll just paste in some code here to handle the styling for our simple form. Now you'll probably wanna customize this for each individual application to do the forms how they fit in that app, but I'll post this in the show notes for this episode in case you want to uh, do something similar to this. So now we can check out the difference by reloading our page here, much nicer. It's all aligned in a nice form. And as you can see, it automatically detected the type of column it is. So released on as a date column um, and category was an association and it automatically uh, knows that it's, it belongs to association, so it displays the categories which you can choose from. And we have our discontinued checkbox because that's a Boolean column. But let's say we want to customize these fields a little bit. For example, our category select here has a blank option at the beginning here. Maybe we don't want that. Well, on our category field here, we just add the include blank option, set it to false, very much like Formtastic, and hit reload. And there it just defaults to the first one. Um, how about the rating field here? Before that was a select menu with five different options, uh, one through five, instead of a text field. How do we do that? And again, much like Formtastic, there's a collection option we can pass in, and this is really neat. You just pass in a range or maybe an array, and let's say one through five, and hit reload here, and it's automatically switched to a select menu. But let's say we want these to be radio buttons. We just pass in another option called as radio. And just hit reload here. And instantly we have radio buttons to choose from instead of a menu. Something else that's really neat is automatic detection of required fields. So here we are inside the product model. And let's add a couple validates presence of uh, for the name and the price uh, columns. And now when we hit reload, voila, instantly they're marked with an asterisk. Pretty neat.
Also, now if we try creating this product with some validation errors, you can see that the errors are displayed in line right next to the fields. Now I've already adding some styling in the background, but you get the idea. Another thing we can add is a hint message next to each form field. So let's say in our prices field, we want to give a hint saying that uh, the prices should be in US dollars. And now when we go back to our form view and hit reload, uh, there's our little hint displayed nicely under the price field. To get more information on the various options you can pass to these fields, just check out the readme documentation for this gem. There's a lot of possible options as you can see here. You might also want to check out Formtastic's readme because a lot of the options there will translate over to simple form straight across. Now what if you want to customize how our simple forms work throughout our entire application? Well, you can do that through the files which were generated earlier in this episode. So let's take a look at this first one here under config initializers. So this is where your general configuration is located. And you could do a lot here as you can see in the comments. So uh, you can change the order of the components. So maybe I want my error message before my input field. You can do that. Um, we can change our wrapper tag. So this is really useful if you like a paragraph tag instead of a div for wrapping your input fields. Um, another thing we can do here is uh, change our default input size. Now this is, um, I think the default of 50 is a little too big, so I prefer 30, and that'll just make our fields a little uh, not quite as wide on our page. So as you can see, there's a lot we could do inside the configuration file here. The next one on the list is a locales file. Now this, as you can probably guess, is where you would do internationalization. Now even if you don't do internationalization, this is still a great place to just change some generic options, such as our required mark. Maybe we want two stars instead of one. And also uh, you can add some various hints and labels and change those for various fields. And the last file here is just one that overrides the form partial for our scaffold generator. And here's what that scaffold template file looks like, which by the way, it's really awesome that in Rails 3, you can override any template file in a generator uh, by just adding it to your application. So if you really want to customize the way a generator works to fit the way you work, uh, you just create a new template file. And that's it for this episode. As you can see, simple form makes it really easy to make a nice form like this with just a few lines of code, one for each field, and that's it. So if you haven't already, I encourage you, check out the simple form gem.